raise the reef for Rosie Fleischman! I'm finally starting to get to the point where I consider myself a poet. And I've recently started dating a man who definitely thinks he's a poet. And when two poets get together, though you endeavor to segregate poetry and leisure, you find yourself forever communicating through rhythmical literacy. Literally. The first time he asked me out, he did not just ask me out. No, he wrote me a poem to ask me out. And he was eager to confess his growing feelings, in case he hadn't made them clear, at a poetry night for everyone to hear, and I fear we've now engaged in this strange arrangement where we only converse in verse and public statements. But that sort of works for me. Though I have a reasonable mastery over language and text, I severely despise having to express how I feel. I like to disguise what's real behind abstract concepts, metaphors, and rhyme. So why change the habit of a lifetime? I'm scared of caring. Daring to get attached, though objectively, I think we're pretty well matched. My nature is to favor remaining detached. Now, I'm all for courting, but I find commitment pretty daunting. If I think that I'm falling, I will catch myself at every stumble. Pass it off as a laugh and a fumble because I have lost all faith in relationships. I prefer to stick to rational logic. If monogamy was God, then I am agnostic. It's a beautiful concept. But if all the cells in our bodies are replaced every 10 years, in 10 years' time, I'll be a different human to the one standing here, and you'll be a different human to the one you now appear, and, and maybe these two perfect strangers will want to persevere. But they'll probably want to separate. I mean, you've got to be practical when every decade you regenerate. Except the cerebral cortex. There are neurons in the brain that don't actually change. From the day we're born, these cells are never replaced. So maybe, if we're lucky, our cerebral cortexes will stay mates. When I wrote this poem, I googled cerebral cortexes, and they're not the only thing that the body doesn't replace. Tooth enamel isn't replaced either. But I left that out of the poem because I thought it was really not very romantic. Uh, so we'll just go with cerebral cortexes. So maybe, if we're lucky, our cerebral cortexes will stay mates. But let's be realistic. I mean, just look at the statistics of marriage. I don't ever foresee me in a white dress or a horse-drawn carriage. I can just about manage to commit to next week. <laughs> okay, this isn't very romantic. I don't wish to sound bleak. I'm just laying my cards on the table. Inevitably, I can't promise longevity, but I am able to offer this. How about a day? Just one particular day. Let's say right now a significantly sized comet is hurtling towards us and we have just 24 hours before we all disintegrate into dust. We're heading for Armageddon, Earth is threatened and death is beckoning. If tomorrow the world was coming to an end then I'd like to extend the offer to spend my final day with you. Have one last conversation under the moon. Climb to the top of a mountain and watch our planet burn whilst we write poems about the view. Or just sit and watch box sets in your room. That's what I'd choose to do. If I had just one day left, I'd choose you. And right now, that is all I know. So, my mate, the end is nigh. Do you want to hang out tomorrow? Thank you very much.